Hi students, I hope you are preparing for NEET PG in a full fledged and uh, most of you will be feeling like NEET PG is going to be the biggest storm that is going to hit you. But remember the quote that if you think there is a storm that is going to hit you, even after the greatest storms, the sun is going to shine brighter. So if you think NEET PG is going to be the storm that is going to hit you, then you are definitely going to be the sun that is going to shine brighter, right? At the same time, I want you to tell another quote by our beloved Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam sir. He said that if you want to shine like the sun, just burn like the sun. Yes? So, if you want to ace it with beautiful colors, you are definitely going to do very, very hard work in the upcoming two months. Right? Okay? So, no distractions and nothing is going to be in your mind except completing your portion, studying, revision and about doing all the MCQs that you want to do, okay? So, there is another mantra you have to keep in mind. That is, keep the mantra in mind, focus, right? So, if you are focusing and if you are just leaving everything out of your room now, then definitely you are going to ace it with the beautiful colors. So, hi students, this is Dr. Agalia, your organic faculty and I have come up with some tips for preparing obstetrics and gynecology for your NEET PG 2024 exam, okay. So, the importance of obstetrics and gynecology in NEET PG 2024 is, it is one of the big bees that is going to hit you in the storm, yes. So, what are the big bees? That is medicine, surgery, obstetrics and gynecology and community medicine. Definitely, maximum of the questions are going to come up from these subjects, okay. And if you take obstetrics and gynecology, there is a minimum of 20 questions out of 200 questions and a maximum of 30 questions if you are lucky, it will come from obstetrics and gynecology. Remember, that is for 200 questions. So, you, if you like the subject or not, definitely you are not going to miss the subject and you are not uh, going to skip out uh, the important topics at least uh, from the subject, right? So, let us see what are the important topics you have to cover from the subject, right? So, first let me start with gynecology, okay? So, in gynecology, we will start with the embryology part, okay. So, in any subjects, you cannot miss the basics, okay. So, definitely your Mullerian anomalies, okay, and the imaging questions and what are the complications if you have Mullerian anomalies, okay, these kind of questions will come. And the second topic is your physiology, okay, especially your physiology of menstruation and ovulation questions, okay. And the third thing, the most important thing to do is about the infertility, okay. So, this is very important topic to do, okay. And next one is contraception, okay. So, in contraception, you have to know about the oral pills, okay. So, it can be combined oral contraceptive pills, okay, or it can be progesterone only pills, okay. And then it can be IUCDs. Okay, and emergency contraception is also another important topic to do. Okay, so don't miss out these topics. And the contraception is an overlapping uh, topic with obstetrics and gynecology and SPM. Okay, so if you are able to do it uh, in one subject, then it is more than enough, right? But you have to do all these content. Okay, and next one is you cannot miss doing this important topic that is abnormal uterine bleeding, that is AUB. Okay. In that, definitely you have to do about the leomyomas, okay, endometriosis. And then, the toughest part in gynecology, yes, you cannot miss carcinomas, any carcinomas and the staging, okay. So, all the carcinomas are important. So, carcinoma cervix, carcinoma endometrium, okay, then carcinoma of the ovary, okay, even sometimes carcinoma vulva pics are also asked, okay. So, definitely you cannot afford me doing carcinomas, especially the staging, right. And then you have to do the pre-malignant conditions also, okay. So, the pre-malignant conditions, especially the cervical intraepithelial neoplasia and endometrial hyperplasia, right. And then you have to do 
polycystic ovarian disease okay so what are the criteria what are the investigations what is the scan findings okay so everything will be asked okay and next one is you have to do about amenorrhea okay so amenorrhea especially the syndromes in amenorrhea like whatever it is turners linifelters or uh, testicular feminization syndrome like that okay and uh, next one is definitely you can't skip this topic prolapse okay and also you have to do genital tuberculosis clear so this is the whole set of topics that you have to do importantly in gynecology so once again i'll come up again so you have to do mullerian anomalies physiology of menstruation ovulation infertility contraception abnormal uterine bleeding carcinomas pre malignant conditions pcos amenorrhea prolapse and genital tuberculosis right and then we'll see some of the important topics in obstetrics okay so if you take obstetrics here you have to start with the physiological changes in pregnancy then obstetric examination is important okay so examination in that all the leopard maneuvers okay so all those things are important even the image pictures of those uh, maneuvers will be given and will be asked okay and then you have to do about the placenta okay placenta is a very important topic you will be asked about uh, the aph causes also like abruptio placentae or placenta previa okay nowadays questions on placenta accreta spectrum are also seen right and then you have to do about infections okay so your torch infections okay uh, and uh, the recent infections like zika infection nipa infection how they are going to affect the pregnancy everything you have to include okay and uh, don't forget to include your bacterial vaginosis okay and trichomoniosis also okay so in this condition what you have to do is you have to do the sexually transmitted disease also and again i'll tell you this is going to overlap with your dermatology so anywhere you have to do this stds right and uh, the next topic is all about the screening procedures okay especially screening for down syndrome okay so what are the markers you are going to use okay so what are the various markers that are uh, used for neural tube defects okay so that also you have to do and all the ultrasound uh sonogram okay so all the ultrasonogram findings in pregnancy okay so when is nt scan done when is anomaly scan done okay so when is the growth scan done so what about the afi okay if you take afi then you have to study what are the conditions causing polyhydramnios what are the conditions causing oligohydramnios okay so all these things you have to study right and also uh you have to do about uh, the medical disorders in pregnancy okay so if you take medical disorders in pregnancy you have to do especially you have to do diabetes okay anemia in pregnancy very very important and hypertensive disorders of pregnancy especially the definitions okay so what is pre eclampsia what is gestational hypertension when is uh, you can uh, tell that uh, it has converted into uh, pre eclampsia on chronic hypertension likewise okay so all the definitions are important okay and the criteria to diagnose those conditions are also very very important okay and also the pathogenesis okay so everything you have to study in detail okay and also uh, heart disease in pregnancy okay so this is another important topic for you and then you have to do uh, importantly miscarriage okay so if you take miscarriage you have to do about the spontaneous miscarriage okay it can be about the spontaneous miscarriage or it can be about the recurrent pregnancy loss or it can be about the medical termination of pregnancy okay so all these topics are important right another important topic is ectopic pregnancy definitely please do not miss this topic right and then also your preterm labor okay and your fetal growth restriction clear so these are some of the important topics in obstetrics and gynecology right as you have only few days left i can categorize the students into two groups okay one category they have completed their first reading at least 
and they would have started revision. Okay, if you are falling in that category, okay, you have to do minimum two revisions. Okay, this is suggested. Okay, two revisions suggested. So you have to plan your first revision of obstetrics and gynecology in four to five days, and you have to do your next revision in the last ten days just before the exam. Okay, so in that, if you are able to do the obstetrics and gynecology entire subject in one or two days, okay, including the content and the MCQs or whatever, if you have taken the notes, you are able to revise it within one to two days, then it is well and good. Okay, but if you have already finished one reading, I would suggest you to do two revisions before the exam. Okay, you have to plan accordingly. And suppose if you are falling in the category, okay, like you have to yet. Start reading obstetrics and gynecology. You haven't completed your first reading, guys. I tell you, this is not a very big subject or a very big deal at all, right? Still, you have time, and I can suggest you two options if you are falling in the second category, right? Okay, no need to panic at all, right? So, if you are doing the subject for the first time, then I would suggest. you again i can categorize you into two groups okay so some set of students will be able to sit for the entire subject in whole day like if they want to finish obstetrics and gynecology they will be sitting for the entire seven or eight days and they can complete obstetrics and gynecology and one set of students they will feel like uh, saturated if uh, if they are doing a single subject at a stretch okay so what i would suggest is if you are falling into the first category again like if you are able to do a subject in a single stretch then you have to finish obstetrics and gynecology in maximum maximum 6 to 7 days you have to complete okay so all the topics what i have told you and remember the previous 10 to 15 years of question papers okay previous or question papers that will do okay if you have to complete it within 6 to 7 days right and if you are a, if you are a person who are getting saturated if you sit for a, with a single subject then i would suggest you to do some at least two subjects okay double subjects per day like for example if you feel obstetrics and gynecology is a somewhat hectic for you you can combine it with some shorter subjects like uh, derm okay derm will feel light for you like right? so you can in this category you can take 12 days okay 12 days and relaxingly finish your obstetrics and gynecology at the same time you will be doing short subject also see for example one short subject so that means you can finish three short subject for example you can finish term you can finish anesthesia and you can finish ortho and obstetrics and gynecology is also over so you will have the satisfaction of doing one major subject as well as you will be completing three subjects also right and if you ask me how many hours of study you should allot during this time ideally minimum minimum you have to allot anywhere between 10 to 12 hours per day okay so no uh, spending time on social media or no chatting unnecessarily okay cut down all the unnecessary things okay and uh, minimum 10 to 12 hours per day you have to do, do studying alone and at least okay at this time you have to spend at least 8 hours per day of sleep okay 7 to 8 hours of uh, sleep you should get and this is for night time alone okay and i would advise you on taking a power nap okay see power nap is something you can take in the noon okay so you have to take it around some 20 to 30 minutes okay so they say this is the ideal time for nap okay so that will give you more energy that will make you feel so much relaxed okay and it will also improve your memory power okay so this thing is advised okay and also keep a check on your diet okay uh, avoid all the junk foods do take healthy items more fruits more vegetables more water plenty of water right so i hope it helped you and i also want you to keep in your mind that the harder you study the luckier you are going to be okay and i also pray that your exams are going to be very easy and you are all going to ace it with flying colors so keep going happy learning and take care bye bye